Got it. <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. Let's pray first of all, otherwise I'll forget to pray, and that's not good. Never good to forget to pray. Father, thank you for this good meeting. Thank you for yourself being amongst us, Lord. Thank you for the good words that we've heard. And Lord, we pray as we read the scriptures together that you bless us, Lord, and inspire us, Lord, and fill us with your spirit again. Take us forward in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so... First of all, thank you for those of you who prayed for me when I was away in Uganda and um, Kenya. We're coming in Batikwe, Yeji Mulunji Nyo, Amina. Okay, Wana Sifiwe. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's the limit of my linguistic ability. Actually, I can sing in, sing in Luganda, but how will you speak? But I don't know what I'm singing when I'm singing, but I can do it. <laughs> anyway, so I had a very good time. So thank you for your prayers. I appreciate your prayers. I think you, you make the difference. Those who pray make the difference. And I, I, I think that's correct. And so first of all, greetings from many, many people. Too many to mention Sam and Sarah, Church and Pidgey, the people in Lugazi. Pastor Tom, Pastor Sam there, and the people there send their greetings, especially to Tina <coughs> and, um, and Jamie, of course, and Sam, <laughs> and all the rest of you. They say, send greetings to everyone. And thanks also for your prayers for Ruth in, in uh, Kenya and the, the children, the young people. I hope by next week I might be able to put, Sarah and I might be able to put a new display pictures up on the board there up to date because that's all a bit out of date you know, like, anyway i won't tell you how many years out of date it is. so but it'll be right up to date nearly by next next week and they're doing okay except that ruth is now unwell they don't know why she's unwell so pray for ruth she's trying to get some hospital tests and so on um it's not, not always easy in kenya and uh, I was surprised how, I hadn't seen them for three years, how the children are young people. I mean, some of them are, are, are young adults now, really. They're still keeping ones who are, they're trying to put them through college. I think there's four. There's a, a few, few they were telling me about have left now, trying to make their own way. So praise God for that. One of them's become a builder and he's doing well and, and so on. And anyway, it was great. It was great to see them and to be with them, but it was very different not being there with Frederick. And I knew in the whole four days, I only preached once. Can you? No, that's not quite true. I did speak to the children several times. So we had meetings there, but I mean, yeah, so that's it's not quite true. But I used to always travel around with Frederick, of course, and we were preaching and so on. And thank you for your gifts, those who gave money. Very much appreciated and very much needed there in Kenya. And anyway, I'll try and write a report about it all, and you can wade through yet another <laughs> terribly long report and try and make head or tail of it all. Let me just check my list. I did write down all the names. And did he, yes. Did it, uh, oh, oh, yes. Some greetings, of course, from Evelyn and Alice. You know Evelyn and Alice? Uh, Valerie, David and Valerie's adopted children, and they, they're doing well. Alice has not been well actually, but she's better now, now that Evelyn is feeding her a bit. And Evelyn is doing very well. I mean, it's remarkable what Evelyn has done actually. They put her through university, she trained to be a lawyer, she's now got a very well paid job for Ugandan. She's got a very posh house for a Ugandan. Uh, she sort of copied David and Valerie's house, her and her husband, Henry. And she's trying to help so many people and all sorts. So that's really great. And she says one day she wants to come here and give a testimony of given, giving to Epsom Christian Fellowship because she feels she sort of owes it to come and give a testimony of giving because she's, she's been helped. I mean, she would be nowhere now it's apart from God. And David and Valerie and and uh, and, and and people here. Uh, that's why she 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 feels like that. 
Uh, so it's, it's great to see her. I also saw Hannah, those of you who know Hannah, and she's struggling a bit with her A-level exams, which finish in, in um, November. So we tried to set up something to help her a bit more. Um, she does very difficult subjects, maths, physics, and chemistry. I mean, who'd ever decide to do <laughs> maths, physics, and chemistry? I mean, that's, uh, there you go. So, so I pray for Hannah. I didn't see Jessica, but I think she's doing okay as well. So it was nice to see them all. Oh yes, and thanks for praying for me. I got malaria, I've never had malaria before, but it was okay, it wasn't too bad. And I, apparently I got the treatment in time. So I didn't get too ill. And I followed my daughter's advice. <laughs> go to the, just, go to the, uh, the what? The doctor, get a test for malaria. Yes. Oh, there you go. Hopefully I can do this, can I? Yes, okay. The gospel of the kingdom. Right, that's the phrase I've had in my mind, the gospel of the kingdom. So there it is. As far as I know, these are the four occurrences of that phrase in the gospels or possibly in the Bible. Matthew 4, verse 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, ah, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Matthew 9, verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Praise God. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Remember, Matthew 24 is about end things, at least some end things, end time things. Mark 1, verse 14. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So we know what the gospel is. At least we know something about it. Uh, the gospel means good news, as you know. And the gospel is not just the gospel. It is the gospel of the kingdom. And the kingdom, of course, is the kingdom of God. So it also denotes the rule and reign of God, where he is king, he is Lord, he is master, he is the ruler of everything and everyone. And, and he, how does he do that? Because it's not like an earthly kingdom, but he, he does it in the hearts of individuals. That's it. I think this is what Mike was saying to us, essentially. And he does it in the hearts of individuals. It takes an individual. You may not see so much of the the kingdom of God appearing, but it is appearing and it's appearing all around the world. And we praise God that we are part of it. And if we're not part of it today, we have the opportunity to be part of it. So there isn't another gospel. There is only the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the king. And that's a very important point uh, to point to, to, to note, isn't it? There isn't another gospel where as another true gospel, where all the benefits and privileges and blessings and the, of the gospel are enjoyed by people who don't acknowledge that Jesus is the king. It doesn't exist. There's only the gospel of the, the, the kingdom. The people who benefit from this gospel are those who willingly and joyfully and lovingly submit to the rule and reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. We heard in the meeting that one day every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess, and sadly many will not confess willingly, um, but one day that will happen, it's going to happen. But now the kingdom of God is coming quietly into people's hearts. So today, if we are not enjoying the benefits and the blessings and the glories of the kingdom, Perhaps we should ask ourselves, who is the king in my life? Who's the king 
of my life. I mean, it's a simple sort of analysis, isn't it? Am I enjoying glory? Am I enjoying God's blessing? Am I enjoying God's... All the great things we're supposed to be enjoying. If we're not enjoying them, then let's ask, who's the king of my life? Who's the master? Who's the Lord of my life? Is it the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it me? Is it sin? Is it covetousness? Is it wrong desire? Is it money? Is it material things? Is it entertainment? Is it football? Or is it tennis? Mm. Anyway, is it my hobby? I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with all these things. Most, well, actually not, but most of the things I've mentioned, there's nothing wrong with them. Some there is. Covetousness is a sin. Yes. But it's our relationship with them which can be wrong, isn't it? But today, if you are enjoying the glories and the, the benefits of the gospel, you can be sure it's because Jesus Christ is your king in practice. Otherwise, you wouldn't be, it seems to me. You can correct me if I'm wrong afterwards, but people are usually too polite to do that. So, yes. Anyway, I think it's correct. This is the gospel of the kingdom. And of course... The gospel is good news, but it's only good news for some people. For others, it's not good news at all. For example, if someone wants to be a devil, it's not good news for them. I mean, the devil, what do I mean by that? The devil, he, he, he you remember Isaiah 14, isn't it? He wanted to exalt himself. He wanted to make his, his throne at least equal with... God. I think he, because of what he knew, he knew it couldn't possibly be above God. I mean, some people aren't like that. Remember the, the phrase uh, one of the Beatles says, didn't they? He said, um, uh, we're more famous than Jesus Christ now. I mean, what a thing to say. We're more famous than Jesus Christ now. I mean, even Mozart is more famous than the Beatles. I don't know if you realise that. You can check it out, see if I'm right. But um, but that's, that's the way it is. I mean, this self-exaltation which we can have in our hearts, that, that the Lord Jesus Christ has to come and dethrone, get, stop us exalting ourselves, and, and, and so on. And then, of course, you know, good news, even in, even in politics, whoever becomes the ruler, it's only good news to some people, isn't it? I mean, for other people, not good news at all. I mean, when Boris Johnson became the prime minister, some people were very happy, but others, yes. Anyway, but the thing is that you can imagine, we're talking about a kingdom. We're talking about a king coming, a king coming to reign and, and so on. And you can imagine that for some people, I mean, for example, if people who live in North Korea or something, if they, if they were given a different government, a different king, well, even if it wasn't, I mean, if they had Boris Johnson as their prime minister, I think they would think they were living in heaven, no matter what you think of Boris Johnson. I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? But the, 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 this is the thing. Human beings live under the tyranny of sin and Jesus Christ has come to deliver us from that tyranny and to bring in another another kingdom and so someone someone might say oh I don't believe in monarchy <clears throat> you know no one's going to be ruling over me I am an autonomous isn't that the word autonomous person but that's self-delusion it doesn't exist Something or someone is ruling over every person. It's just a question of who or what it is. It might be self, it might be sin, it might be some idol or something. It might even be religion. It might be self-righteousness. Um, but if it's not the Lord Jesus Christ, ultimately, it's bad news. Ultimately, it's bad news. This is what he's saying. He's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. He, preached, he came preaching the good news. That is good news. 
Every other king and kingdom is, is bad news. You know, sometimes people say, oh, well, do we really have a, a choice? Well, yes and no. I mean, it's a fact. One day every knee is going to bow and so on. But the choice, we do have a choice. The choice we make is between life and death. That, that's what the Bible says, isn't it? Choose you this day whom you will serve. I had a great time preaching in, in a, to hundreds of young people in a school in a place called Kamuli. And they were so enthusiastic and so riveted listening to the word of God. Like my brother Colin is when I'm preaching, you see. And so take your cue from him. And, and uh, yeah, but, and I, and I preached on that very thing. Choose you today whom you will serve. Because we become what we choose, actually. If you think about it, go, go away and think about it. I'm not going to explain it point by point. Like, we become what we choose. Choose today whom we will serve. Are we going to serve this king? Are we going to serve ourselves? Are we going to serve our ambition? Are we going to serve money? What are we going to serve? And, yes, anyway. Right. Now, in all these verses, have you noticed that the, the gospel of the kingdom is being preached, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of king, the kingdom will be preached, preached, and so on. It's preaching. So the thing is that it's not just taught, it is preached. Now, teaching is vital. You know, I've been out of the um, and still am, I suppose, a teacher, and uh, for many decades, teaching is vital, and teaching involves many things. It involves discussion, questions, answers, even giving different opinions about things and so on, so that we can learn. But preaching is different. Preaching is the authoritative declaration of the word of God. It's the declaration of a king. So there's no... There's no, there's no there's no discussion, there's no questioning. It's a declaration. That's what preaching means. And in fact, this word here, I don't know if I've... Oh. Yes, caruso. You know that word caruso? That's the Greek word, caruso. It means to be a herald, to officiate as a herald, to proclaim after the manner of a herald, always with the suggestion of formality, gravity, and an authority which must be listened to and obeyed. So what is a herald? Heralds were originally messengers sent by monarchs or noblemen to convey messages, messages or proclamations. I know that's true because I got it off Wikipedia. <laughs> so, that, you know, that's what a herald is, you know. Nowadays, we have radio, TV, internet, and so on. We get messages, proclamations like that. But in the old days, they had the town criers and that sort of thing, especially the very old days. Hear ye, hear ye, and all that stuff. And the herald doesn't have their own authority. They have no authority of their own. They're just the messenger. They convey the message of the king. We're talking about preaching. I'm distinguishing between preaching and teaching. I'm actually teaching you about preaching. Whether I do any preaching, you'll have to judge <laughs> later on. But, um, so it's the message that is full of authority. It's the message that is full of authority. And <clears throat> that's why we've got to get the right message. The right message is here, here. That's, uh, you know, St. Augustine said, when the Bible speaks, God speaks. I mean, I don't know whether... <laughs> How many other good things he said, but I thought that was a good thing. When the Bible speaks, God speaks. And <clears throat> so the Herald doesn't give their own opinion, doesn't teach their own doctrine. They faithfully give out the, the king's message. And then everybody who hears know where they stand. And they might not, they, 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 they may not like the message, they may like the message, but they know where they, they, they stand. They know what it is. So the message is sent to inform, to command, to bring hope. That's the message we're talking about, the gospel. 
to show what is required of the, of the subjects and to warn as well. And people respond how they like, they might rejoice, they might be sad, they might obey, they might rebel, but they all know that this message has the backing of the king. So we have to understand that preaching has in, in it the element of command from God and of warning <clears throat> to those who refuse to obey the command. So I've got another one here. Look, Acts 17, 30 to 31, Paul speaking to the Athenians. Truly these times of ignorance God look, overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. He's not making a suggestion, would you like to join my team? Would you like to join the club? You know, if you get on my side, etc., etc. et cetera, et cetera. God isn't doing that. He is commanding all men everywhere to repent. This is why I say, if we ask the question, do we have a choice? The answer is yes and no. The choice is, will we obey God? Will we submit to him? Will, will we receive this kingdom? Or will we not? That is, that is the, the choice for everybody in the world. And if someone says, well, that's no choice at all. Well, that's their view. God says it's a tremendous choice. Choose this day whom you will serve. Will you choose life? Will you choose death? And so on. He commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. God has made sure that we know he's going to judge the world by that man, and he is the standard, by raising him from the dead. That is just history. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is history. Anybody who denies that is, 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 is either ignorant or foolish. Yes, because it's, it's, simply, it's simply history. So there's this element of command. So who is preaching this gospel of the kingdom? Well, in, in these three verses, uh, which are three of the four I listed, it's, of course, Jesus himself. Jesus is the preacher. He was the preacher. He is the preacher. Jesus is the preacher. So... He, I, unlike a common, what we might call a common herald, Jesus is the king. It's the king himself doing the preaching, and the, the, the message is his message. Now, of course, these days we're used to this because we're in the, the, the era of TV, radio, internet, and so on. So we're used to the ruler, the king, or whatever you call him, making the declaration himself, you know, like Boris Johnson, you must stay at home. Do you remember that one? You must stay. <laughs> for, better, for better or worse, whether he's right or wrong, that's what he did. And we all heard the, 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 the declaration. But so we're used to a herald being the person in, in charge. And Jesus is the one. He was declaring it. He came from heaven to preach this gospel of the kingdom. Of course, that was the lesser part of his work. He actually came to die for our sins but he came preaching this gospel of, of the kingdom and, and of course the this whole subject of the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven is is a, a tremendous part of of the gospels of the teaching of jesus and so on so here we've got it ephesians 2 verse 17 and he came the lord jesus christ he came and preached peace to you who are afar off and to those who are near. Now, actually, the preached here is a different word. It's not Caruso. This is euangelizo, from which, where we get evangelism, euangelizo. There's three words. I think there's three words, at least three words, which are translated preached in the New Testament. So this is one of euangelizo. And it means to announce good news, to announce good news. He came. And preach to you who are far, far off. That is to the Gentiles who are far off. And to those who are near. That is the, the Jews. And the thing is, of course, he didn't ever come. Jesus didn't ever come and preach to the Ephesians. And yet he did. He came in Paul. Paul went. Jesus Christ came 
and Paul. This is why I'd say he is, he is still the preacher. And so it's a weighty matter to be a preacher. And to a certain extent, we're all called to be preachers. We, we, we may not feel we can do what Les does and all that and preach like that. But we are all called to declare this message at some point or another. So what is the, what is the good, he can announce this good news. What is this good news? It's this, that you were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, <clears throat> but now he has reconciled. So that bit comes from Colossians 1 to 21. He's reconciled you to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity, the hostility. That's the verse before this, Ephesians 2 verse 16. This, this is the good news. You were once alienated and enemies, an enemy of God. Alienated, cut off, not enjoying any of the benefits of eternal life or of the gospel. You were once, this is what he's saying to these Ephesian believers, alienated, not just alienated, but enemies in the way you're thinking and so on, by, by wicked works and so on. But now, through the cross, he has reconciled you. The thing is, our God, the Lord God Almighty, he's not a tyrannical dictator. He isn't. But he is the king. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is Lord of all. And he is working out everything according to his purpose. And everything will conform to his purpose. And we're either for him or against him. We're either friends or we're enemies. And we all start off as enemies because of our sin. This is what the Bible says, because of our wicked works. But in his wonderful love and grace and graciousness, he has removed the barrier himself. Amen. That's, it's just such tremendous good news. It's not good news if we want to stay autonomous and independent of, of God. That's essentially what sin is. Sin is independence from God. He's removed the barrier himself. He's died to reconcile us to himself. He's almighty God. But he's not, he's not just all-powerful, all-powerful uh, ruler. He is love. This is the amazing thing, isn't it? And it says in the Bible that this, this gospel, this good news, it's not just to be enjoyed. Yes, we love the idea and all this. It, uh, and to be entertained, it's, it's to be obeyed. This is what it says here. The consequences of obeying very clearly spelt out in scriptures it says this is 2 Thessalonians 1 6 to 12 so he's been saying in the first half of this chapter that okay you've got a lot of trouble you Thessalonians persecution and all that and I preached the gospel to you you got saved now you've got all this trouble like we heard today Probably people who have trouble and of course there are many many of our brothers and sisters got terrible trouble persecution today so he says since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God on, on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ God is commanding people to repent he's not suggesting it he's not saying if you want to he is commanding people to repent and if, 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 if we don't repent, then we are rebels. We, are con we continue to be enemies. And if we get all flustered and upset, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize God was like that or something like that. Well, you need to read the Bible. He says he's taking vengeance. He's going to be taking vengeance for those who do not know God. Praise God that he's not doing it right now. We, we praise God that he does bring judgment and sometimes pour out wrath uh, upon people, individuals, and nations. Sometimes. He also shows a great deal of mercy. But the thing is, because trouble often brings people to their senses. You know, you think of the, uh, what do we call it, the prodigal son. He had 
when he had no trouble, he was well. When he gets trouble, he, he comes to his senses. And he says, I know what I should do. So he said, verse 9, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints to, and to be admired among all those who believe. Because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you. So I put that I emphasize that bit because you see this, this is this is the thing about God and this is the thing about God's people. God God isn't writing anybody off. He is being long suffering in order to save people. And th this is what Paul said. We we also also pray always for you. We're all making. We want you to be saved. This is what he's saying that uh, God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness and the work of faith. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the gospel of the kingdom. It's the gospel of the king. The king is to be submitted to, to be obeyed, to be lovingly obeyed. Okay, so who else is preaching this gospel? Well, I've already said any and all who preach the gospel of the kingdom. But it's the Lord who is to be preaching that's why I mean we we are we are heralds if we okay there's teaching and there's preaching but if we're going to preach we we can't preach our own opinions otherwise it's useless and worthless it's actually damaging to other people and it's hopeless isn't it we've got to preach we've got to understand we've got to meditate upon we've got to study we've got to think about and, and simply preach the word, the word of God. and But apparently it doesn't matter if we don't preach with the right motives. Because look at this. Philippians 1. Um, some indeed preach, that's Caruso actually, that one. Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. This is Paul talking about <laughs> some of his fellow preachers. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, and yes, will rejoice. In other words, it, it shows how important the message is. You know, the messenger might be a bit hopeless. You know, why is he standing there? Well, because he wants to be another Billy Graham or something like that. And he just, and he, he never achieve it, of course, but uh, he just, just selfish ambition and all this sort of thing. But um, the message is so important. So where is the gospel preached? So it tells us in our, our, our text, it's preached among the people, among all people, everywhere. It's preached in the cities and villages, in the synagogues. In the marketplaces, I know it doesn't say there, but it's preached in homes, by riversides, you know, in acts and so on, in workplaces. It's preached in prisons, in hospitals, in schools, but not in this country, of course. I mean, in this country, you can preach all sorts of other nonsense, but you're not allowed to preach the gospel of Christ. You can say something about it, but you're not allowed to preach it. And so he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So what's the effect of preaching the gospel? The effect is that lives are changed. Lives are transformed. That is the effect. Jesus came preaching, and then it says he went about healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. We sang it in our hymn, didn't, didn't we? Blessings abound where he reigns. The prisoner leaps to lose his chains. The weary find eternal rest. And all the sons of want are blessed. Amen. This is why I was saying, if we find, find that we are not blessed, if, if we are, find we are not benefiting from the gospel, we just need to ask, well, who is, who is the king of my life? You know, I mean, I, I think this hymn writer got it right. All the sons of want are blessed. Where are he reigns? where he's raining. 
where he displays his healing power, death and the curse are known no more. In him the tribes of Adam boast more blessings than their father lost. <clears throat> but it's interesting, isn't it, reading these verses, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. And then considering that not many months later, it appears that some of these people were actually, uh, you know, because these multitudes came, were actually calling for the death of Jesus, crucify him. It's a very sobering thought, isn't it? So, in that sense, they were beneficiaries of the gospel, but you can see that it was a, that was an outward thing. We're talking about the inner gospel where Christ appears to us in our, our hearts and so on. So, okay, very quickly. So why, why did Jesus come preaching the gospel of the, the kingdom? I'll just say some obvious things. You know, no, we know that the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness and so on. Everything and everyone belongs to the Lord. But the thing is, is everything in the world <coughs> reflecting God's glory. When we look at creation, look at the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, the flowers, whatever, we look at each other. Um, we think, well, that's God's creation is amazing. But when we look at politics and nations, the media, entertainment, business, schools, universities, TV, the internet, we say, are all these things displaying the rule and reign of God? Of course, the answer is they're, they're not. <clears throat> Why not? It's because the world has fallen into the wrong hands through man's rebellion in the fall the world has fallen into the devil's hand. There's another kingdom. There are now two kingdoms. You know, we used to do the plays, didn't we? One of them wasn't one of them called The Tale of Two Kingdoms or something. Anyway, I can't remember what it was about, but I mean, it was definitely The Tale of Two Kingdoms. And it's, it's, it's man that's, that's, that's put the, the world into the devil's hands. And, and all those years ago, the Lord didn't intervene to stop it so the first man put, the, put, 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 put man under the devil's authority somehow so god sent a second man that's a tremendous bible teaching isn't it a second man has come to take back the kingdom or to be more precise he's he's taking out of the world out of the other kingdom a people for his kingdom and let me just read this one Luke 11, 20 to 23. This is Jesus in a discussion with some Pharisees and scribes and people. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He who is not with me, is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. So the strong man armed is the devil. His goods are mankind. And the, the stronger man is the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the devil's got all his arms. He's got his armor. He keeps his, his goods in peace. And, 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 and that is possibly the best strategy. You know, people will carry on from month after month, year after year, idling towards eternal destruction, shockingly. And it's a, it's a, a grace from God if they get trouble and start reconsidering. So he messes with people's minds. You know, there's this verse here. He's the God of this world who blinds the minds of those who don't believe. He deceives people. He seduces people into rebellion, etc., etc., and, and you, I mean, we got into the ridiculous situation now where people believe such, at least they tell us they believe, ludicrous and nonsensical things which are entirely and utterly untrue. They don't believe things which are obviously true. They believe things which are entirely and obviously untrue. I mean, how do we get into a situation like this? I think even... 20 years ago, 10 years ago, certainly 30 or 40, 
He said, no, no, that will never happen. And it's happening. <laughs> and you can't, can't believe what, what will happen next. He blinds the minds of those who, who don't believe and, and so on. And it says here, look, 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of or in the embrace of the wicked one, the whole world. Because of the fall. This, this, this is a sort of a, this is what's happening cosmically, if you like. It explains why things are as they are. Of course, there isn't, there isn't a, you know, a, a, it's not like an equal competition like between Liverpool and Manchester City. I mean, they are virtually exactly the same, aren't they? Let's face it, between uh, Djokovic and Nadal. I mean, they're just exactly the same. And it's, it's nothing like that. Of course, God is omnipotent and almighty. But, but this is the world we live in. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. That is a fact. And this is why there's so, so much error and nonsense. And, and the more people are deceived, the more oppressive society becomes. That's a fact. And so it's, it's, it's inevitable that as our society becomes more ungodly, it becomes more oppressive and restrictive. But, sorry, I, I'm trying to stop. Actually, I'm not really. I shouldn't tell a lie, should I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm carrying on. <laughs> I've got used back used to African meeting, which are open ended. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say you say oh, I'm going to stop now, and then they you say something, and they say they keep you going for another half hour or something. They're not everywhere. Some some not everywhere. So. Right, Colossians 1, 13 to 14. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, has delivered us from the power that is the authority of darkness. The authority, he has delivered us and conveyed us, translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. God has done it. In whom we have redemption through his blood and so on. And then Jesus said this, you're of the father of the devil, you do the works of your father. In other words, you're of your father, the devil, and that's why you behave like the way you behave. This is why people behave the way they are, because they've got a father who is the devil. <laughs> He's a liar. He's a murderer. I mean, he fills their minds with lies, and they behave in ridiculous ways. But Jesus came to, 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 to preaching the gospel of the kingdom to bring us out from under the dominion of Satan, Amen. And into the kingdom of light, that's what he's saying. And he, he commissions preachers to, to preach that, like Paul. Look, I'm not going to read it, but I'm sent, this is Jesus to Paul, he, when he's giving his testimony. I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes and so on, to turn people from the power of Satan to God. Amen. This is just such a tremendous thing isn't it it's the gospel of the kingdom it's the gospel of the kingdom there, there there's a war between two kingdoms the kingdom of darkness the kingdom of light the kingdom of satan the kingdom of god and and i tried to explain and i'm sure you know anyway why why it's there and so on and it's somehow man is in the middle of it. And it's all to do with what I, I choose, isn't it? Who will, I, who will I make my king? If I make anyone or anything king apart from Jesus Christ, then I'm part of the kingdom of darkness. This is what, what I think the Bible teaches us. So if we choose to belong to ourselves, then we're under the dominion of the devil. We come under his dominion and so on and, and so forth but the gospel offers us the way out it's the gospel of the kingdom <laughs> amen so i'm gonna i'm gonna stop now and i wonder if we because um mike brought it as well maybe we could could we just sing that song rain in me because mike said captivate 
captivate our hearts, raining me. I know it's five past, but uh, is that right? So I just, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 everyone for coming um there's uh should be tea and coffee now an opportunity to just to uh share on some fellowship with each other so please stay for that and so putting out yeah so we'll have to put out in a little while for mothers and toddlers yeah so uh, we'll be putting out all the chairs for that okay thank you
Hi, Anna and uh, Catherine. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye.